Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Car Question. Matt Witt. Benoit Charrette. And you might not know Benoit, but guess what? He's one of the pioneers of the automotive industry back in Quebec. Benoit, you've written a lot of books. Yep. How many years so far in the automotive industry? 32nd year this year. Uh, I've been in books, radio, TV, websites. Uh, I'm, I'm a jack of all trades in the business. <laughs> oh, wow. So you're really a pioneer with the big names out there. You're oh, in the man, big names, man. Don't need pioneer. <laughs> you're, you're, you're making me old. But ah. yeah, yeah, I've been there for a while. Absolutely. <laughs> so welcome to Car Questions. So today we are driving the Subaru Crosstrek, the, the Wilderness Edition. <laughs> Got to be careful with my French accent. I used to say wild because it's the bread of wild. Yeah, kind of wild. But well, it's wilderness, <laughs> wilderness, or whatever you call it. Whatever you call it in the comment section down there below, I want to know. <laughs> but you probably saw the video that we did on the car question with any Subaru cross trick that we tested. Off-road, mud, water, snow, and you probably also saw that we can push this little vehicle so far, even more far than I ever thought. So there's nothing to prove right now, but guess what? Subaru is bringing that off-road edition this year. And when you look at the exterior, you've got that unique grille, that copper accent, that exclusive color that we have, the Jazer Blue or the Alpine Green. And how about a ground clearance, which is much higher than the regular version. And those really beefy Yokohama tire, that's probably, yeah, the big and important thing if you're gonna hit off-road is the tires that are gonna give you an awesome grip. The cladding now, Benoit, the cladding, plastic. Is there too much plastic on well, this car? Cladding is a winner because every time you see at a product that Subaru did, take the modest Impreza. Mm. When they made the Crosstrek first, they just added cladding to an Impreza and the sales just jumped when they did that. Yeah. And after that, they did it with the Outback, they did it with the Forester and all the it's Wilderness working. Edition. There's more plastic for looks, yes, but also for use. Because yeah. when you go off-road, you can uh, brush a tree, you can pass through or close to a rock, mm. and the cladding will absorb it instead of the molding, not the molding, but the, uh, the sheets of, metal. The sheet, the sheets of yeah. metal. So you're better off putting a little dent in a plastic. And than replace the plastic rather than change. Exactly. Or, yeah. So there is a use to it other than the aesthetics. So you're gonna have also a hood decals on top that will change the way the sun glare at you. So it's pretty looking cool though. This is one nice cross track which is way more aggressive. Even when you look at the front bumper, the rear bumper, you can see with the logo also Subaru in the back when there is dust on it that it looks really great. Inside though, still you've got the big screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You've got those seats that are with a unique material. They're gonna be easier to clean and how about that wilderness logo on the address too and when you get to the rear also in the trunk you've got a little led light up there that will give you a great lighting for whatever you're going to put in the trunk and if you want to see something also during the night it's comfortable it's really the usual interior of the cross track that we really like how about the engine now there is no 2.0 liter there is the 2.5 so by the way do you like that engine because 182 horsepower yep. can seems a little bit shy though well it's a better engine than the two liter so there's more horsepower with that 182 178 foot pound uh, but you know what i would have appreciate an optional version with the turbo yeah. Uh, where you get to maybe what the WRX offers, 230, 240, because the CVT does give you a better gas economy. But yeah. the counterpoint is it will steal some power from yeah. the engine. And you feel that where you're on the road. And I would appreciate a little more horsepower. Of course, I would have loved a manual transmission. <laughs> uh, that would be really a good match. But it would be nice if they could offer just as an option. I, I know they didn't want to go too far pricing yeah. the car, but it would have been nice at least to have the option. Well, so far that CVT, well, they added an oil cooler for increased towing capacity, a final drive ratio, which is really unique also to that transmission. And you've got X mode to the rescue also for better traction. How about towing capacity? 3,500 pounds. This is a lot, Benoit, for such a small vehicle. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> impressed I, and not pleasantly impressed a bit scared when they announced this yeah. because the size of the car i mean yes it'll probably tow it uh, my main preoccupation is the fact that if you have i don't know the limit behind you and you have to do a quick maneuver 
Uh, I'm not sure that the car no. will sustain whatever you're pulling at that weight. So I, uh, I would go 2,500 maybe. Yeah. Uh, on t over that, uh, on the <laughs> you're in risky territory. <laughs> how about uh, how it feels on the road? Well, you've got that kind of vague direction feeling, but when you look at the beefy tire, and it has a unique front suspension also with the coil spring, with how they configure it, in the rear it's pretty much the same. It feels a little bit more vague, but it's what we're used to in the off-road vehicle though. But otherwise than that, you've got protection to go really deep. And but you know what, that CVT, when you go into off-road, you don't feel that elastic feeling yeah. like the limited model has. Uh, one good thing they did is they, they modified the ratio, which makes, there's kind of a slip ring when you have the regular or the limited model we tried earlier in the day. This one, as soon as you punch the gas, it grips. Yeah, it grips. So for off-roading, that's exactly what you want because there's a situation where you need power now. And they've, they've thought of that. So in that case, that with and you said they modified the front, it's for a better departure angle, it's for a yeah. better, so you can go deeper, you got a bit over nine inches of clearance. Yep. For a small vehicle like that, it's, it's really impressive. great, because we did off-roading today that probably nobody who buys the car will ever do. Uh, be careful, Benoit, well, some guys use some, to their some. cross track and but, go really uh, deep. <laughs> and it, it really did the job. Yeah. Honestly, for a, a, a little car like that, it was very composed. I was surprised today to what we put through that little cross track and how you get back on the road and you're perfectly fine. Yeah, you know, the tire did a great job on that. <laughs> those tires took a beating, that's for sure. Yeah. So let's talk about price at 31,572 MSRP, a starting price. You add $10,000 to that MSRP and you get the wilderness price. And if you want to finance it in Canadian dollar, $56,000. Benoit for 60 months at 7.49% APR financing. That's a lot of money for, it they, is. they don't call it a subcompact anymore. They, no, no. They way. call it. <laughs> They're afraid of calling it a subcompact. Yeah, they call it a compact crossover and the Forester yeah. is a compact SUV. But for such an amount of this money, uh, such a little car, wow. You got to get to the new reality and with the high interest rate, uh, mm. it, it's the new reality. Is it a good car for that money? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, would I buy it for $56,000? Man, I'm still questioning myself. Well, the, I'd, I'd rather pay cash. Can I do that? <laughs> uh, they, sometimes they won't even sell them no, to you I if know, you pay I cash. I know, I know. But remember, guys, that it's way cheaper to go for this one rather than modify a cross yeah. track and you might go out of warranty. But with this one, it's going to be below. Well, and, and Subaru did the job for you. That's basically what they did because you yeah. don't have to buy protection underneath, you don't have to modify your suspension you have four the really good package. tires and I mean they did what people did with their own money on existing model and they put a package through it and call it wilderness that's what we call the thumbs up so a minus point though no more manual transmission the GPS is limited to the limited version uh, thanks to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto you're gonna be fine under the vehicle be careful this is not a big off-roader you got to make sure that you don't hit really hard those kind of rear tables the suspension the connectors and everything and also it's lacking a front view camera that the Forester has has and the Outback has. On the plus side, this car is versatile. You've got amazing off-road capability. You've got that towing capacity on paper though, and you've got the tons of security feature that you're gonna find, which Subaru makes me pretty confident that if anything's happened with this car, everybody's gonna be fine inside. So in conclusion, this is a little mountain goat with the wilderness success of the Outback of the Forester. I think this one will be a hit, Benoit. Hey, it has success written all over it, that's for sure. <laughs> and the four-wheel drive system at Subaru is still yep. one of the best on the market. You're right. So feel free to comment in the section down there below. Thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you another time on another video of Car Question. Thank you, Benoit. Bye.